Hey everyone, Brandon from Glorious, where we focus on goals, gains, and giveaways. As a reminder, I do a weekly crypto giveaway to one lucky subscriber, so click the link in the description for more information. But today we're we'll talking about what is Bitcoin mining. We're also going to be talking about the Bitcoin transaction and also talk about the value of Bitcoin. But as always, with every project, including Bitcoin, please do your own research and figure out if that project is for you. So there's a lot of new people in the crypto space. Uh, a lot of my um, subscribers are new to crypto. So I wanted to do this review video just to give you some basic overview on what Bitcoin mining is. So the first step in Bitcoin mining is transaction is made. It is bundled together with many other transactions into a block. So if you heard the term block or blockchain, that's how it starts. Miners, so Bitcoin miners, verify that transactions within each block are legitimate. And so this is obviously really important to make sure that everything is safe and secure uh, for every party involved. And these Bitcoin miners compete to solve a math puzzle known as a proof of work problem. So this is a little bit different if you are uh, familiar with Ethereum mining, etc. Uh, they have a different, uh, something different than proof of work, which I'm not going to talk about today. But Bitcoin uses proof of work. And again, the miners have to solve this quote unquote math puzzle. Uh, the reward is given to the first miners to solve each block's proof of work problem. So there's potentially could be several people trying to solve this at the same time, but the first person that quote unquote solves it um, gets, to, gets the reward. Uh, the verified transactions are recorded on the blockchain ledger, finalizing each coin's change of ownership. So the main, there's just pretty much two purposes to Bitcoin mining. Well, one is verifying the legitimacy of transactions. So that's obviously really important. Like if this uh, checks and balances system didn't exist, then, you know, then this wouldn't, this whole cryptocurrency business couldn't be possible. So it's important that um, that, that happens. And then the second is recording them to the Bitcoin public ledger. So if you've seen, uh, you know, maybe you haven't seen the Bitcoin public ledger, but maybe you've seen something like a BSC scan or Ethereum or ETH scan, where there's a, uh, some place where you could check to see every transaction based off someone's contract address and wallet. And I think that's important that there's trans fully transparent and that you could actually see what's happening out there. And I think that's really important uh, for this whole ecosystem, just to make sure everyone is safe and secure and you know legitimate. Distribute new coins to the network by rewarding miners for performing this crucial task. And again, that's important too. Like there's some people out there that literally their job is to be miners of uh, not only Bitcoin, but Ethereum, et cetera, but in this case, Bitcoin. And it's they should be rewarded for that, right? Like they're doing a task that's helping people out there uh, making it safe and secure, allowing this to be possible, and obviously recording it uh, on the blockchain. And if if it wasn't for them and they're like foundational piece to this process, then uh, you know uh, this wouldn't be possible. So giving them a reward uh, in Bitcoin is obviously uh, great. And so you've heard about these Bitcoin miners that um, have like super powerful computers that uh, do. Uh, all these and you kind of wonder like, oh, why do you need this super powerful computers? Because it's kind of like a race, right? Where this step right here where they have to solve this math puzzle, the more powerful computer they are, the better chance that they can process quicker and they could be the end up being the first miners to solve that block. So you've even seen, um, you know, Bitcoin mining farms where there's multiple computers, uh, like maybe hundreds of computers all trying to, uh, I don't know if they're, I don't think they're all solving the same problem, but they're solving multiple problems at the same time. And the idea is that they're not going to win every one of them, but you're just trying to increase your chance in order to essentially get your reward. And at the end of the day, that's great for, um, you know, that's great for this whole ecosystem and process because they're getting the reward, but they're also um, enabling, uh, you know, it to be possible to verify and uh record. So uh, that's Bitcoin mining in a nutshell. Obviously, there's a little bit more uh, complexities to it, but I just want to give a brief overview on what that is. So if we're actually talking about the Bitcoin transaction itself, payments are sent without going through any financial institution. So obviously, that's a perk of that. Literally, it's just, um, you know, uh, through the blockchain. You don't have to deal with intermediaries like banks and things like that. Um, you don't have to, like right now, if I'm trying to, if you're trying to like use a credit card, you're not just paying directly to someone. There's uh, a stop at the bank where, you know, there's a, you try to put, 
you try to take money out and they obviously the bank has to check that you have it and then they uh, put it through the system so there's some intermediary in between that but with cryptocurrency it's uh, it's not like that um, the transaction fee is less than one percent uh, and Bitcoin transactions are invulnerable to hacking right because it happens uh, pretty instantaneously I think you've heard a lot of horror stories about people getting their bank accounts hacked or they're losing their credit cards etc cryptocurrency they want to be as safe and transparent as possible so uh, you know it, it's great that as long as you're keeping your wallet safe I don't want to say um, you know that if for some reason someone gets access to your wallet or if you lose like uh, one of your ledgers or hard drives and someone gets access to that somehow and um, you know obviously I wouldn't count that hacking I would I would count that as uh, a bad opportunity or you you're losing something and someone else is gaining it but uh, in general uh, hacking like no one can really like hack into your uh, wallet especially if it's a physical uh, device so uh, essentially this whole Bitcoin transaction is a lot safer and secure and anytime that there's less parties involved in the process of payment uh, the better uh, so the last thing I want to talk about is the price value of Bitcoin obviously there's been a lot of talk about Bitcoin obviously been, it's been down lately and it kind of went a little bit below 30,000 and people are unsure of where it's going to be and I think a lot of people were hoping in the beginning of the year that it's Bitcoins can get 100,000 now they're just hoping it stays where it is or, or just goes up um, a little bit but I think it's still out there but I do still think that there's a lot of value to Bitcoin in general so for investors hold buy and sell Bitcoin on the market. So for the people, if you're investing and you're holding, especially at the time when it's down, depending where you bought it at, and even for me, I've bought some Bitcoin when it was priced at 50,000. I'm definitely holding. I still strongly believe in Bitcoin and I want to see everything plays out. I still think it's a good time. Again, do our research is not financial advice. I do think that it's still a strong uh, cryptocurrency. Obviously, it's been the number one cryptocurrency uh, forever. So um, I don't see anything uh, in the near future that's going to change that. Um, a lot of institutions buy Bitcoin on OTC private markets. A lot of institutions are still buying into Bitcoin. I think that, um, you know, they're seeing the value in it. And obviously, they have the the power to, you know, they have the funds to actually invest and they see that the potential that Bitcoin can um, have, right? And I think it's still early on uh, in Bitcoin. I know that's kind of uh, funny to say, even though it's been around for a while and the oldest cryptocurrency, but I do think that there's still a lot of possibilities. I think as time goes on and it's going to have more and more utility, the value is just going to continue to increase. So they still see this as a potential good investment. Um, traders, and I don't know how uh, helpful it is to do this now, but uh, short and long uh, Bitcoin derivatives. So the idea is that even below, um, you know, when Bitcoin dipped below 30,000, if you were able to buy some uh, during that time and you sold it today, which, um, you know, I think it's well over 30,000 now, I'm going to say like around 35,000, that you're still going to make, um, you know, relatively good money, right? So the idea is that if you're watching Bitcoin closely, and keeping track of it when it dips along with the market and selling, uh, you know, buying and buy, uh, <laughs> buy the dip and then selling as soon as it goes up. You, there's still possible ways you can make money that way. Um, project, uh, sell Bitcoin to fund projects. So obviously if you are, you know, maybe you're holding a lot of Bitcoin and you actually don't, you know, like in the beginning it was going up this year, but then all of a sudden now it's going down and maybe you actually need to pull out that money to fund other projects, maybe to fund, you know, cryptocurrency projects of your own. That might be not be a, a bad idea considering Bitcoin is, uh, in my opinion, a long-term hold. And then the last thing, uh, just to talk about the price value of Bitcoin, uh, the miner. And that's what we started this video off with, but inject new Bitcoin into circulation. So remember, Bitcoin has a limited supply and anytime uh, miners, uh, you know, uh, unlock uh, and, um, you know, solve that puzzle and get the rewards, they're constantly unlocking, injecting new Bitcoin into circulation to get, um, and eventually the, there'll be a limitation, but, um, with, with the overall supply uh, growing, I think that it's just, you know, increasing the overall value of Bitcoin and allowing more and more people to be able to get in. And just, uh, I think it's, um, you know, still a solid investment. I do think that there is people out there that are still constantly mining. I think that there are people investing in high-end graphics cards, 
building farms and making lots of money. Maybe they're not making as much money as they did before, but they're still profiting off um, everything that they're doing and it's still very needed. It's not like Bitcoin is going away anytime soon. And I do still think it's a long hold and still a great project in general. So let me know what you think about Bitcoin. Let me know if this video was helpful. But um, yeah, let me know uh, just in general your overall thoughts on Bitcoin. If you're holding Bitcoin, if you're selling Bitcoin, just your overall thoughts. I, I did a community poll a couple, I guess that was a week ago, just saying your overall thoughts on Bitcoin and everyone seemed to just still be happy with Bitcoin. And, you know, just want to see how it goes uh, in the next couple months to a year to years down the road when uh, Bitcoin uh, keeps climbing. But thanks everyone for watching. Catch you guys next time.